So now in this video, we're going to look at the uh, SN74LS14. And uh, it also has N on there. The main thing to look at though, it's the 7400 series integrated circuit, part number 14, right there. And the 14 tells you what it does. It is a hex inverter. And you may be able to read it uh, right there. Maybe even easier than with uh, the loop. But in uh, any case, we're using one hex inverter there. It's also got a Schmidt trigger input. That's an important part of uh, this circuit. As we will see, you can see an LED flashing right there. To control that flash, we just have a resistor and a capacitor setting the speed. We'll look at that coming up. But uh, that's one of the inverters. Here's another one. So we got output input, output input, output input, and then the positive side of the power supply. We gotta power this, of course, right there. And uh, then again, we have the output input, output input, output input. So there's six circuits. We're only using one of them. They're identical circuits otherwise though. So now, zooming back here, you can see the uh, waveform. We can go a little closer. And so it is high for about 25% of the time, a little bit more, and a low. That's what that duty means right there. And so it's flashing on and off less than uh, once a second. And so we can adjust that really easily. So I'm finding that I need to use, well, this is a one kilo ohm resistor setting the timing. When I tried 10 kilo ohms, that was too much resistance I've been finding. So uh, one kilo ohm works. So I'm gonna stick with that. We can yank the one kilo ohm though and go lower. So it's just going higher. Well, at least to uh, 10 kilo ohms, that's the problem. I'm not sure how much I can go higher and it still works. But there you can see 510 ohm resistor. It's flashing about twice as fast. And uh, don't worry about the numbers up there. That little green bar there, that's the display that we see there. All of this has to move even further, about twice as far from what we see before all the info will be accurate. It's looking at all of it and giving us the number. But you can see it going up as it fills up more of this area. And finally you would get a uh, pretty accurate reading. But in case, we're not going to be too picky about that. We're going to put back the one kilo ohm resistor and we're going to yank the capacitor. We could also change the capacitor value. So as I said, I kind of need a low value capacitor and uh, or a resistor, I mean. And there you can see this going a whole lot faster. So, but I need a you know fairly low value resistor from what I found so far. And so higher capacitors, value capacitors will slow it down uh, more than uh, lower value capacitors, as you can see there. So, in any case, we'll go back to this capacitor, because this capacitor and the one kilo ohm resistor, this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor. The other one was a 100 microfarad capacitor. So the other one had one tenth the capacitance. It was probably flashing about 10 times as fast. So that is just the output. We can look at the uh, input voltage. So this is where I have the oscilloscope is at the end of that jumper. The uh, probe is an alligator clip, as you can see here. I still call them probes. I, I don't know if that's improper or not. But in any case, alligator clip crimped to a jumper goes there. And then the uh, black one going to the negative rail right there with a blue jumper. But in any case, this is our output. We can measure the input too. That's the only pins we're interested in. As I said before, the other two plugged in are just the uh, power pins. And so there you can see, we already saw that it is high for less time than it is low. So you can see right there, that curve is a shorter period of time. So that's the Schmidt trigger part of it. So it's comparing the uh, input voltage. When the input is high, the output's low. When the output is, or when the input is low, then the output is high. The output's the opposite of the input. But there's not a particular point there's a couple of points. So when the capacitor voltage drops low enough to set the output high because the, the input's low so the output goes high we have a resistor going to the capacitor to charge up the capacitor at that point. And so the uh, lower the value resistor the faster it will charge. 
the lower value of the capacitor, the faster it will charge. But in any case, it charges up to a point, and then it's a high enough voltage to set the output low. So it's not one particular point where it's like bouncing. The point that it's going to changes based on what it was earlier. So if the output's high, then, or if the uh, input is high, the output's going to stay low no matter where you go within the higher range. But once it drops to a lo low enough area, then the goal is to move up there. So as long as it stays low, anywhere around zero is actually there, but as long as it stays low without hitting that point, the output's going to stay high, but the output's charging it, so it's just going to push it up to that point and then drop down. So the uh, goal voltage keeps changing based on what the uh, output currently is. It uh, kind of fights the output from uh, getting the uh, input to a certain voltage. So that's how this works. It's pretty simple. We can remove the, we looked at that enough, we can remove the uh, load. The load's not doing and the load doesn't affect anything. As you can see it, it didn't change the uh, waveform at all. So the, the load was coming to the output as was the capacitor and the resistor. So there you can see that waveform again. I don't think it changes at all while well, you uh, change the load. I'm sure a low enough uh, resistance load might affect it, but uh, with this load it doesn't seem to affect it. So as I said before, this is the multimeter probe. We looked at the two waveforms. This is it for the circuitry. As I said, a resistor and a capacitor. The uh, lower value of one or both of them, the faster the output's going to change. And the higher value of them, the slower it's going to change. But as I said before, I found uh, 10 kilo ohms, which isn't very much for, for uh, circuits like this. The 10 kilo ohm was too high. So I don't recommend going that high if it's not working that high for you. It's probably because the resistor's too high. Try lower value resistor and see where it goes. So, in any case, Hopefully that all made sense. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.